Alright, how we doing folks? Today is Monday, December 11th, 2017, giving you our weekly NBA report. In the Eastern Conference, the Celtics continue to set the pace. They're 23-5. and uh, Their defense, I guess you could say, if you're saying slipped maybe just a bit, they've certainly uh, ballooned a little bit in their points per game. They're giving up. They're just a little shy of 97. They were a little lower for most of the season, but... Uh, that would be the only thing you're looking at with the Celtics at this point to have any real problems. They lost a tough game against the San Antonio Spurs. They still hold that four-game lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers, who after their big winning streak have now railed off six in a row after that was snapped. Uh, the Cavaliers are 17-7, and seven, of course, with the Celtics. Um, they are an 11-3 and three impressive mark on the road. They got a road win last night against the Detroit Pistons. Could not get the road win in San Antonio. They really uh, do struggle with the San Antonio Spurs. That's just always been one of their things. I, I would worry a little bit about their assists. Uh, Kyrie Irving was scoring a lot of points in that Spurs game. Uh, they're, you know, middle of the pack in assists per game. That's generally a ball-moving type team. Uh, with Brad Stevens, but they are 23 and 5, playing very well. Jason Tatum is coming along. And excuse me, that's not the Cleveland Cavaliers who have won six straight after that. That's the Toronto Raptors who have gotten up to two. I, uh, they are four games back of the Boston Celtics. They are on the six game winning. So I was going to say, I don't th I don't see how Cleveland could have won six straight after that losing streak. Cleveland is 19 and 8. Um, they have Toronto at four games back, Cleveland at three and a half. It's percentage points at this point. And so Toronto has a better winning percentage, even though the Cleveland Cavaliers are technically closer. You look at the Raptors, uh, as we've said, we're going to say it the whole season. Basically, um, you know, I don't want to say make or break because they did lock Lowry back up. They do have DeRozan for a few years now, but the way the roster is currently constructed, it's essentially make or break. You'll probably still build around DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, but you'll definitely be looking to in exchange parts if it doesn't work out this season. Milwaukee's starting to come on at 15 and 10. Indiana continues to play well at 16 and 11, even in the absence of Paul George. Give them credit for that. I really Really didn't think this team would be able to continue to be there. I mean, they were what 43 and 39 with Paul George in that area. So I didn't think there was really any hope that this team would be able to, you know, be on the cusp of it. They have a chance to be at least a 45 win team at this point. But again, it's still relatively early. We are closing in on the 30 game mark, so you know what the team is. But to you know, 16 and 11 could be 46 and 36, it could be 42 and 40 at this point. Ola Depot had 47 points last night against the Denver Nuggets. That was a very nice victory. The Nuggets also playing well. We'll get into them when we get to the Western Conference. But uh, you know, Ola Depot putting up almost 25 points this year, so it's not like that was an aberration, the 47 points. We'll keep an eye on it. Got to look at them. You know, it's not just somebody points. For those of you who don't know what somebody points is, that means there's a guy on a team. Somebody has to score. Uh, they're running the offense through him, so maybe he just needed the opportunity to flourish. We'll have to see. But they're certainly playing very well. One of the teams that's starting to concern me just a bit is the Washington Wizards at 14-12. and 12. They lost the game to the Clippers recently. Now, all these teams in the top eight are in the plus in their differentials. So that's what's really uh, boding well, I would say, for the Wizards. They're plus 2.4. You look, on the other hand, a team like the Milwaukee Bucks, who's 15 and 10, is um, only one tenth of a point. Indiana is one and a half points. Then you got Detroit, 14 and 12. New York, 13 and 13. They're nine tenths of a point and two tenths of a point, respectively. But the Washington Wizards were a team that certainly felt they should have beat the Celtics last year when they played in the uh, Eastern Conference, what, that would be the semifinals. And this is a team that the Celtics really improved. You would have to say Cleveland, if anything, might have slid a little bit. You would really have to be looking for the Wizards to take a step up in this case. And they just really haven't. And I'm a little surprised by that. They're continuing to just hover right there around 500. This team, 
I mean, what did they win last year? I think 48, 49. I would have expected this team taking the next step coming into this year being, you know, close to a 52-53 win team is really where they would need to be in order to make some noise this season. And at this point, they would have to really get hot just to finish where they did last year. You know, again, the playoffs are a different animal. You can always play well in the playoffs, but I, I just don't like what I'm seeing from Washington Wizards. John Wall putting together his normal very good numbers, as he usually does, over 20 points, over 9 assists. So at some point, will they get rolling maybe after the All-Star break? Maybe they're just in a bit of sleepwalking mode at this point because it's early on in the season. I don't know. But I do know that they do have to figure something out at some point because this is, it's not going to end well between Wall and Beal if at some point this team doesn't pick up the pace and get it together and figure out a way to to try to get to the conference finals. I mean, that's what this team is trying to do. They've been to the second round. They've got to get past it, and we'll have to see if they can continue to do that, if they will continue to strive, or what will happen. You have the Pistons. They are 14-12. They've lost six straight, so they're starting to come back down. The Knicks continue to play pretty well. <clears throat> they are 13-13, 76ers right on the outside. They traded Jaleel Okafor this week to the Nets. They have lost four straight at 13-13. Miami 12-13. The Nets, who got Jaleel Okafor, are 10-15. Uh, I knew the Nets weren't going to be anywhere near as bad as they had been in the past coming into this year so give them credit they are playing uh well at this point um you know could this team maybe have a chance for the outside of the playoffs they got okafor so that's a nice addition for them they didn't have to give up much for him again they don't have many draft picks so they got to get guys like that then orlando 11 and 17 charlotte 9 and 16 i'm still this team should not be that bad we'll have to see if guys are traded maybe Kemba Walker will want out of there they brought in Dwight Howard but they have lost what is it looking like three of the last they've lost a ton of games here seven out of the last eight just not good enough they have to they have to bring in another scorer for Kemba Walker it's really just as simple with this team Dwight Howard is a nice addition guys like Michael Carter Williams is a good defender good like slashing player but he's not a guy who will get his own points Nicholas Batum good shooter Frank Kaminsky has come or not Michael Carter Williams he's on the team I met Michael Kidd Gilchrist is the slasher uh, Michael Carter Williams is a guy who's really just a a decent point guard in this league. Dwight Howard is not going to get many points on his own at this point. So those are the things that the Charlotte Hornets will need to address. I don't see this season going anywhere at this point. But, you know, like we said, Nicholas Batum, a shooter. They need another go-to guy who's going to score. And then you have the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls, both in a combined 11-40 and 40 between the two of them. Then, of course, moving into the Western Conference, you have the Houston Rockets who continue to set the pace. They are 20 and 4. Um, you know, they have won nine straight now, got a nice win against the Trailblazers last night in Portland. Not the easiest of all places to play. And Portland is still above 500, but Portland is actually struggling at home this year. Uh, James Harden putting up 48 points again. Obviously, he's your early season MVP favorite. You just, I mean, it, everything is clicking for James Harden in the Mike D'Antoni system. Over 30 points, over 9 assists, the 5 rebounds. Uh, would, the only way you'd say they should be higher is just in comparison to a guy like Russell Westbrook who puts up those numbers, but his 5 rebounds are right where they've been, essentially, throughout his entire career. Of course, you got the nice complimentary pieces, the Ryan Andersons who can shoot. He didn't really do much last night. Uh, you know, Trevor Ariza, the slashing style guys, Chris Paul, 14 points, uh, just shy of 10 assists at this point. It's going to be, it's going to be a nice matchup to see how long the Houston Rockets can keep this up and what will happen when they play the Golden State Warriors. I think they're right there with this team, uh, come seeing what they've been able to do this season. I didn't think anyone could really slow down the Warriors at this point, the Warriors who are 21 and six, but the... Houston Rockets are certainly showing that they have the firepower to do so. Uh, the Warriors, as we said, 21-6, won six straight, 
8 out of 9, so they're playing well. Extended uh, 10 out of 12, even more extended than that. What is that? 19 out of 22, it looks like. Sorry, I'm trying to add up all these games, just going to the extension of it. And you saw Curry go down with an injury. Could be bad. We'll have to see. The Spurs got that victory over the Celtics. They continue to just impress. Minnesota 16 and 11 in the top five at this point. Uh, continuing to, to grow and develop at this point. Playing decent on the road. 500 ball on the road. I think that's important for this team. Uh, Minnesota, if they can be in that top four there. Certainly that would set up a nice second round series with either a team like Houston or Golden State, whoever the one seed would be. And you'd like to just see how well they can develop. But first things first, got to keep um, playing well, got to keep moving on this year, keep growing, keep developing. It's one thing to be in the fourth spot, you know, sparring it out for home court in the first round uh, early on in the season when we haven't even turned the page into the new year. It's another thing to be doing that late in the year. So. Uh, let's keep an eye on that, but certainly Minnesota was a team I expected was going to come on last year. I certainly expected it this year, and they are starting to do so. The Denver Nuggets, who lost last night to the Pacers, continue to play well up in Denver and really surprised me at this point. They didn't have Millsap last night, which I think was critical to the uh, the effort, but they still put up 116 points. Uh, really just doing it with a bunch of guys, uh, you know, like Wilson Chandler, Jamal Murray, you know, like these are just <laughs> dudes. They're not bad players. Uh, Jamal Murray is a guy who's really improving as he comes along. I think at some point he will be a very good player in this league. This is only now his second year in the league, but I, there's nothing... You know, Wilson Chandler, to me, is a career journeyman guy. He's a good player, but it's it's just it's very surprising the way this team has come along. Millsap is a good player. Of course, they didn't really have him, but Millsap, to me, is not where he was a few years ago in Atlanta. And Millsap, even at the end of the day, is not anywhere near a guy who's going to be carrying a team. He's a he's a go-to guy, don't get me wrong. But with the complimentary players they have, it's really surprising how well they continue to do. Portland, 13-12. and 12. Portland, I'd like to see if they make a move or something. Uh, Evan Turner is not really working out. Uh, to me, he would have been a guy who could really help that team. They have the firepower with Lillard. And McCollum, they need more though. It's just as simple as that. Then the Pelicans, 14 and 13, they were able to beat the 76ers last night. They lost a tough game to the Kings. Look, uh, it's really going to come down to how well Rajon Rondo can dictate that offense because Rajon Rondo is not a shooter. This team, when you look at them on paper, they are simply just terrible for the analytics. You have a guy like Rondo, a point guard, who can't really shoot to save his life. You have the two bigs who don't really spread the floor. So it's it's very curious to see what this team can do and how far they can go at this point. Can they get better than 500, which they've basically been sputtering right around? You know, will this team go into the playoffs a 43 and 39 team? They're 14 and 13 at this point. Or at some point, will this team figure it out, start to win, and start to really put things together? And to me, that would all come down to Rajon Rondo. He had 18 assists last night. Anthony Davis had 20 points. DeMar Cousins had 23 points, and they scored 1-1 against the Sixers. Is this going to be a situation where they can take from this game and move forward? Is this going to be a situation where they will be struggling? You know, this was an aberration, and the more things go forward, who knows? Who really knows what will happen with this team? I don't know. It's a tricky situation. It's a curious situation at this point. But then you have a team like Utah who has the last spot up there in the Western Conference for what would be the playoff race at this point. They are right behind at 13 and 14. I'm really still surprised that this team has played as well as they've been able to with the departure of Gordon Hayward. Uh, you know, of course, hey, we're not playing for the Celtics, but you had you had that guy who was really carrying that team, and now 
you're relying on Derek Favors and things of that nature. So I don't see it. I don't know. Oklahoma City 12 and 13 was able to win one. Let's see how well they can start to move forward. The Lakers 10 and 15. I would expect they would have been about right where they were. Clippers struggling. Uh, Phoenix, I wanted to see some more improvement from that young team 9 and 19. And then you have the bad teams, the Sacramento Kings 8 and 18. The Memphis Grizzlies 8 and 18. The bottom has completely fallen off. And the Dallas Mavericks 7 and 20. Not surprising to see Sacramento and Dallas down there. Certainly surprising to see that the bottom has completely fallen out for the Memphis Grizzlies. All right, the power rankings still got to have the Celtics number one, and then the Houston Rockets number two, Golden State Warriors number three, going to give Toronto number four, and then Cleveland number five. All right, when the game goes final tonight, the Monday night game, we'll give you a recap of that either tonight or tomorrow morning. Be sure to stay tuned, and remember, we appreciate all subscriptions. Thank you. Have a good one.